How's everybody doing? Welcome back to my channel. This week I have the cover up masterclass here at the shop and I'm gonna be doing a cover up. So, with that being said, let's get this day started. Let's go! What I'm here to tell you is how to execute a film cover because that is something that if it was easy, everybody would be doing it, you know. But the fact that it's so much to learn, that's where it gets interesting, you know. So there's not a stupid question, even if it's like relearning something, ask away. I'm gonna be learning from you guys too because I, I, I'm not gonna be up here thinking that I know everything because I know I just specialize on what I do. But if you guys have a suggestion, an idea, an opinion, throw it out there and we're gonna discuss it as a team. You know, because at the end of the day, we're gonna be here learning from each other. Well, do you give them the option of what they want done, or do you, do you tell them that they're limited to certain things that they get to do a uh, successful? Thing? Yeah, let's just say that client comes in and he is looking to get this tattoo done, right? But he is very picky, so that's where the communication comes in. But I also wanted to push myself to give him something that he really wanted. There is some times where I have to tell the client, hey man, this is not gonna work. Let me tell you why. So I break it down for that client and I say, this is why. So I, I customize it. After I customize it, I look at the whole thing. I study, I try to memorize it, every part of it. This whole thing, I already have it in my head. I don't need to, if I wanted to, I don't need to see this to do a cover. But I have it there just for reassurance. But what's gonna help you in the cover up is memorizing your concept because that's gonna allow you to be more creative along the way. Some parts of the tattoo you're gonna to have to match what you expect it to heal. Yes. Yeah. It's about predicting. It's all predicting. And that is very important because if you know if you can predict how it's gonna heal, then you're gonna have problems with doing problems in the future. My favorite part of the day, uh, I enjoyed it all honestly. Everything that he had going on, he was a great teacher. So to see that he does every single tattoo with liners and brown shaders. I'm excited to go back to Florida and utilize these things. It takes a lot of prep work to do the tattoos that, that Mr. Reyes does. Because it's easy to see it on YouTube. See, it is easy to kind of, oh, he put that together, you know, probably an hour or two hours, but not nah, days. Trying things hours. out, different different tones, different techniques, readjusting lighting, um, um, mastering detail, and just making sure that the cover up's the best thing for it. I think the same as everybody else, all the knowledge, the way we buy, like, yeah. he's super humble and like, he opens those doors where you can actually buy with him. Like, this guy really sits down with you and he really takes his time before he moves on to the next subject, you know, he really, he really does interact with you and he does not move to the next subject until you really understand it. The experience overall. Um, Mr. Reyes knows how to just walk you through everything. Appreciate the experience and just learning from him. And you know, he's one of the best doing it. So why not learn from the best, you know? Absolutely. What was the most surprising thing to you? Um, I think the same as everybody. Just learning that he doesn't use Max. I feel like just uh, all the new information that I didn't freaking know, you know, coming into a new freaking, uh, I don't know, a new concept of cover-ups is just different to me. The equipment is just crazy to see that he's doing all those pieces with two needles. Yeah, what was the most surprising thing to you? <laughs> the voltage of the machine. Right now, with all the information cluttered in my head, pick a favorite part, the way that he designed things on Procreate. Yeah. Um, there were some things that he did through, throughout his design process that, that just kind of blew me away, and I I'm gonna go back to the hotel room and scrap all of the designs <laughs> that I was working on because um, I got some full day sessions going on. But yeah, we're, we're, I think it's gonna dramatically change the way I look at the way I put pieces together. Seeing his head in the way that he approaches the design process, I think, was the most surprising part. Probably watching him actually do the same technique. Was there one specific thing that was very surprising to you today, or was everything kind of like brand new? Um, honestly, all of it was just kind of like, <laughs> like whoa. Yeah, yeah. All of it was kind of holy shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. All right, I need a good song to uh, get me hype. 
Yo no soy tu marido, ni tampoco tu hombre. Solamente el cangri que cuando tú llamas te responde. How you feeling, bro? You nervous? It's okay. It's okay to be nervous. If you were nervous, then this wouldn't be an experience. Cangri que cuando tú llamas te responde. No soy tu marido. Ni tampoco tu hombre. Solamente el cangri que cuando tú llamas te responde. Damn, that looks pretty tight. That looks exciting. Okay, so me looking at this, um, the the parts that I see that might give me a little bit of problem is um, here, I'll show you, is where it comes down to the eye here. Uh, this is going to be easy. I can already tell. Uh, it's been about 10 years, right? 10 years when you got this done. This is 2019, so big difference. Whoever did this one definitely knows how to pack in lines, you know? Because if this person would have done this one, it would have looked almost identical, you know? Because I've seen it happen where they're like, oh yeah, this was done two years ago, and this is like 10 years ago, but it looks the same, and that is because whoever knows how to pack in those lines, those lines are not going anywhere, or even like solid black, they're not, it's not going anywhere. So luckily this guy uh, didn't know what he was doing, so good. Did you, where'd you get this done? Uh, in a basement. In a basement. Yeah. Uh, with a tattoo artist or no. just a homie? My, my buddy was learning. So okay, there you go. muse. Okay, so there's, because there's a difference, you know, sometimes artists work at a basement and they be doing some killer work sometimes, you know? Not this guy. But, <laughs> not this one. <laughs> we were 17, so. Uh, unfortunately. Yeah. So the only thing I stenciled was, the only thing I printed here is just this planet. I'm going to freehand the, the Milky Way, but the whole thing is what I actually need. So I'm going uh, to have you put your arm right there, then move it from there. I don't really think about it too much. I just, I don't think about where things are going to land. I just put on the stencil. And then I just look at it, oh, pretty good. I like it, I like where it is, I like where it is, it's center. All right, pretty good spot, perfect. I landed right on the, <laughs> with that noise, you know what I mean? It just landed right on the, on the circle of the spider, which with this, I'm gonna do something nice with that, probably add more rocks. Depending how I see the whole thing, I'm gonna base it off how bright it is here on the bottom. And if this is too bright, then I have a chance to go darker on the top. But if everything's looking way too dark, then I'm gonna make sure that this is bright. So balancing it out. The way I look at it, it's always, if it's dark on the bottom, go bright here, dark and light. I'm starting from the bottom, right here. And my next question is, do you want two fingers, three fingers, or one finger, or as close as you can? <laughs> they're, gonna, they're gonna take down my video, bro. They're gonna be like, this is, this is too sexual. So I got the placement here. Uh, I like where everything is. I'm gonna freehand the Milky Way down here, make sure that I place it where I want it to look good, and then just work from there. All right, ready? Let's do it. Let's fucking Let's tattoo. Go. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs>I did want to go in depth on how I'm gonna uh, separate the rock and the eye socket without compromising everything else and still be able to cover this up. Based on my, on my, uh, my whole reference, I noticed that this is my darkest point and that's gonna help me to create the rock or the meteor to give it a highlight on top of it. So I'm gonna do this super black highlight and I'm gonna 
slowly transition from my black to my medium to my light. And based out of what I see here, I'm gonna figure out if I want this to be super dark or light, okay? The eye socket, yeah. So this is the top of the eye socket here. I'm gonna go from black to medium gray to uh, light gray, and then I'm gonna finish it off with either a medium or a solid black on the bottom, just to see, depending on how everything looks. And then I'm gonna do the meteor at the end because the meteor is the thing that's gonna stand out from everything else. So first thing I'm gonna do is uh, solid black. All right, that's the first, that's just all the black. Now I'm gonna start transitioning to my medium because the bottom of that rock is all the black. So I gotta make sure by the time I reach the bottom of the meteor, it has to be my lightest gray. And then just navigate through it super smoothly so you have all these different tones that can separate the meteor from the eye socket. All right, medium gray right here. I'm slowly transitioning to my lightest gray. And then with my medium, for my, with my lightest gray, I'm gonna map it out. I'm just gonna do a, a, across the whole entire socket, I'm just gonna run through it with my lightest gray. All right, so I just did just my lightest gray. So now that I, I mapped it out, what I'm gonna do now is go back with my solid black or maybe 60%. Now that I have a little bit more of that, those details, I think I'm gonna go darker. Yeah, I'm gonna go darker here on the bottom of the socket. Definitely needs it. But I'm gonna start on the Meteor. I'm gonna switch from my 14 round liner to my seven round liner. My life, Allah. Where is the pizza? I'm hungry. Let me see. Let me check the order. It's only Why is the time moving so slow? It says that it's gonna get here at 1:13. What time is it? 12:40. Oh, God damn. I got a little something for you guys. All right, first person for this certificate is Sean White. My dude, come through. 
little gift bag with a little certificate. Hell yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming. Here you go, little gift bag. Juan Haro. Juan Aro or Juan Haro? Aro. Alex Zamora. Thank you for coming through. Thank Appreciate you. you. Johnny Luna. Hey, let's go, my dude. Kidding tatuajes. There you go. Finally, my first. Hey, hey let's go. <laughs> Ray Parker. Hey, let's go. Put it to practice. Omar Rodriguez. Abuelita, mi café. Ahí está, mira, para que veas que sí te graduaste, muchachón. Eh, no, no. Martín, Martín. Eh, hey, I appreciate you. Chantel Fowler. Fowler, thank you for coming. Appreciate you. Woo! And that concludes this seminar, my guys. Thank you guys for coming, I appreciate you. You know, having to travel here, that really means the world to me because it's very surreal, the fact that you guys were interested in coming in here and learning about cover-ups, you know, and that means the world to me. And uh, I hope we can stay in touch. If you guys have any questions, reach out to me. I'm more than welcome to answer any questions at any time. So yeah, other than that, let's just have fun. Let's just relax, it's been two stressful days. So let's just grab a beer and let's just have fun. Let's go. <laughs>